These are challenging times. Heroes of history, local landmarks, even the state flag face new scrutiny. Do they reflect today's values? As the South wrestles with its Confederate statues, Boston reconsiders its own conflicted spaces. This Lincoln Memorial in Park Square, a Confederate monument on George's Island, tributes to Christopher Columbus in the North End, and a fictional witch in Salem. Yawkey Way is renamed. Perhaps Fennel Hall, paid for by the profits of the slave trade, is next. Welcome to the Black Heritage Trail. I'm Ranger Al, I'm a National Park Service Ranger. A point of undisputed pride here on Beacon Hill, the memorial to Robert Gould Shaw and the 54th Regiment, hailed as one of the nation's most important monuments. This is the first African-American combat regiment to be raised during the American Civil War. The bronze relief statue by renowned sculptor Augustus St. Gaudens marks the location where the Massachusetts Regiment marched off to war in 1863. Guy on the horse, Colonel Robert Gould Shaw. Grew up right down the street, part of an abolitionist family, quit Harvard at the beginning of the war to go and fight. The story of the 54th inspired the 1989 Oscar-winning film Glory. Today, it inspires visitors and locals alike. Boston's a city of a lot of firsts for blacks, and I don't think people know that. The Shawn 54th Memorial is really important in so many ways, but you have to put it in context. National Parks of Boston Superintendent Michael Creasy. It was intentionally put here in front of the State House. It was intentionally put here to one of the greatest and first public parks in America, the Boston Common. And it was intentionally put here to be on the Black Heritage Trail and the Freedom Trails together. Take a good look while you can. The monument, unveiled in 1897, will soon undergo a major renovation, a joint effort of the city, National Park Service, Museum of African American History, and the Friends of the Public Garden. I am Liz Bees, Executive Director of the Friends of the Public Garden. We have for 49 years worked with the city of Boston to care for the Public Garden, the Boston Common, and Commonwealth Avenue Mall. The Shaw 54th Memorial is an amazing piece of public art. And in 1981, the Friends raised $200,000 to restore the monument and set up an endowment for its care. But despite that care, water has worked its way down from the top and has been deteriorating the foundation under the bronze. The National Park Service had a matching grant program which had monies for looking at preserving nationally significant sites, and the Shaw Memorial was one of our largest and most significant grants. We don't want to just restore this monument. We want to use it as a platform for dialogue. We are at a time when the whole question about monuments is very controversial. This monument we need to lift up because most people don't know the story of this monument. During construction, a temporary installation will tell the full story, unfolding on a 900-foot pictorial scrim created by Fritz Kletke and Susan Batista of Visual Dialogue. This whole area needs to be blocked off for the construction. So we took that as an opportunity to make a construction fence with graphics to tell the story of the memorial. This quote from Frederick Douglass, I think, really sets the tone. Why is this memorial here in Boston? Think public exhibition with museum quality detail. We thought what would be interesting is have these images of the actual soldiers. So these are all tintypes. The origins of photography are about the same time as the Civil War. We had never done anything like this before, but we do a lot of work with the Smithsonian uh, down in Washington, taking things that are kind of archival American history and giving them a compelling contemporary spin. I think it's very significant, especially in these times, to understand history and the sacrifices people made and the importance of Boston in American history. The life-size panels will line this space on the common behind the memorial. We do these printouts just to kind of get a sense of the scale of this. So if you're walking by, it really grabs your attention. Some things you want to go up close to, some things you can see from a distance. So it really has different dialogues with the people that are interacting with it. The hope is that when the restored monument returns, there will be a deeper understanding of what it signifies. It served as a gleaming example of the courage and the fortitude of black troops. In the centennial 1997, when it was rededicated and celebrated, General Colin Powell came and spoke at the monument, and he said, I stand on the shoulders of the men behind me. If it wasn't for the 54th, I would not be standing here talking to you today. 
And National Park Service chores on the Black Heritage Trail will continue during the restoration project, which is scheduled to begin next spring. Yeah, and included in that project is the preservation of two large elm trees that really frame the monument. It's believed they were planted in the 18th century by John Hancock, mm -hmm. who lived across the street from that area where the State House is today. Very interesting. The men had their statues, but what about the women?